all right students so in the last class we talked about limited companies okay i'll give you a quick recap as well and then we'll proceed now limited companies uh, are the types of business which have certain common features which are different from other types of business such as sole trader business and partnership business we discussed that earlier and those common features are you can see that uh, to your left side on the screen separate legal identity limited liability and continuity so uh, bilal jameel can you tell me what is that feature separate legal identity all about the separate legal identity means that the business and the owners are two different identities all right very good so this concept says that business and owner they are different from one another so it means their profit their share of loss their property assets they all are different and owners cannot be sued like in the court there cannot be a case filed against the shareholders it's always the business and you know that uh, these days uh, even vehicles can be leased through banks in the name of the business why it is possible because by law business has a legal identity so you can buy a car or a vehicle or a property or an asset in company's name because of this characteristic or feature that is separate legal identity and then comes limited liability and we discuss that as well razin ishfaq please comment on it sir limited liability is when owners personal assets are not responsible to pay the debts of the business very good that's right so another feature which is there and which is not found in case of partnership business and sole trader business that in case of loss or any financial difficulty or crisis owners are limited to the um, to a certain amount to pay that and that is the amount which they have already invested in the business so they cannot lose more than that amount and their personal assets personal property personal bank balance is safe it's not responsible to pay that loss so rest of the loss or the amount which is due that will be paid by the business and the owners are not responsible for that so actually it is an advantage for uh, people who would like to invest in a business but they do not want to take a great amount of risk so it means in limited companies the risk is there but it is not to that extent which is there in case of partnership business or in sole trader businesses because there they have to cover it up either they have to sell their own property as well because there the owner and the business are the same there is no separate legal identity in case of sole trader business and partnership business okay so then continuity and what is it um, faria khan so continuity means that in limited companies the business progress won't be disturbed because the if the owner dies as it is a incorporated business the ownership would be transferred immediately to the dependents or their children so the capital invested will not be affected okay, so very business good. will continue very good that's right so that is why we say that limited companies usually have a long life why because you know that if an owner dies as well faria explained explain it very well i do not need to so still business can continue despite the loss of one owner so either the share will be transferred to the dependents or if dependents they want to continue so they can continue that in the same manner because shares will automatically be transferred to the dependents or to the family members either there is a son daughter widow or any other family member 
but if they do not want to continue what do they do they simply withdraw their investment out of the business so it means and there is a way to do it huh? but i'll talk about it how to withdraw your investment out of the business but right now our focus is continuity so it means business that in case of limited company keeps on going keeps on running so there is no impact of uh, a loss of an owner in that case so that is why continuity is there um like think about if i talk about pepsi or coca cola so pepsi actually started in 1885 and coca cola started in 1876 so you can imagine that about their life cycle which is there so this clearly shows the feature of continuity especially in case of limited company because pepsi and coca cola both are limited company okay all right so we have done that now you know that to start a limited company there needs to be somebody who can actually get that legal work done right and what is that legal work you have to submit certain documents you have to get your company registered okay now so for that you require somebody so that person who actually starts the business we call that person or if there are more than one we call them promoters you can see that i have written that in red color right promoters so promoters are the people who actually do all the pre preliminary work all the initial work or preliminary work which is required to form a limited company they do it so they fulfill all the legal requirements to form the company okay after fulfilling all the requirements all the documents which are required and after getting their company registered now the company is in a position to operate now what do we call it we call it you can see that the brown box incorporation takes place so after the preliminary work that is initial uh, legal work which was required after doing it the business or the company comes into an existence so you can see company is born so that is why we call it incorporation takes place or company is incorporated it is regarded that now company exists and it has i told you that because of separate legal entity that that feature now company has its own existence own legal identity all right so now so that is why we say that all limited companies they are called incorporated businesses now why do we call them incorporated businesses because they have separate legal identity and once they are formed they have their own separate identity okay which is contrary to sole trader and partnership business so once the company is set up now all legal requirements have been fulfilled after that what promoters do or if there is one promoter what he does or she does because now what is required the thing which is required can anybody tell me now after forming the company what is the top most priority anyone they bring the owners owners okay or why why do you want you are the owner as well na because you you started the company you are a promoter and you are the owner as well so why you are waiting for the owners sir so we can get the capital okay all right oh, hussain very good hussain good work done by you because when limited companies are formed the promoter or promoters want more people to join in as owners and the reason is because they do not have sufficient amount of capital and that is why they form limited company otherwise they could have started sole trader or partnership business but because they require more capital so that they can actually expand their business okay they want more capital so now after 
having a legal ex existence as far as company is concerned now the promoters require capital and for that what do they do they issue shares right promoters or the company in that case because company has a legal identity so com company issues shares right and obviously it is done by the promoters okay now so i told you what are shares and it's written there in the blue box we discussed that earlier share is basically a piece of certificate okay which is given to those people who are willing to or who actually invest their money in the company and that certificate shows part ownership of that person that okay whatever amount of capital which is there in the company that much percentage of capital belongs to that person so that piece of certificate is a proof that the person is the current shareholder of the company and the person is having 20% 30% stake in that business depending on how many shares you buy now you know that in pakistan you cannot buy one share or two shares it's just not possible at least you have to buy 500 shares or 1000 or 1500 2000 2500 3000 so this is how it goes so now it does not mean that you will for example if you buy 500 shares so you have to count it first that whether the shares are 500 or not in quantity no they will give you one single piece of paper that is what we call share certificate and on it it will be written that how much value you own value of shares you own right let me show you uh, maybe a picture of a share certificate as well just a minute all right you can see that on the picture to your left side there is a share certificate okay so this is a piece of paper which is given to the people who invest money in the business and it shows that the person has a certain percentage of ownership in it or a certain proportion of shares are held by that person and that makes him the owner or the shareholder now in a company the owners are called shareholders and why they are called shareholders why because they hold shares simple is that because they hold share certificate that is why they are called shareholders and they are the owners and we call them shareholders just because they get a share certificate in return when they invest money in the business and that is the proof for example if and you can get your money back as well but you cannot withdraw your investment from the company what you can do at the maximum you can sell those shares again like if you are not satisfied with the business or the company or you require your investment back you can sell the shares now we'll talk about it how shares are sold and what are those markets where shares are sold but right now it's sufficient to understand that shares can be sold because value is written on the share certificate and then you will be able to get the money back or sometimes you get more money than you previously invested do you know how it how is it happened or how it happens anyone so for example you have invested 10000 dollars okay but when you sell your shares you get 15000 dollars is it possible anyone the price of share increases very good lareb thank you very much excellent answer why because when you buy shares remember face value is written on the shares so on the share certificate it will be written that okay you hold 500 shares and the price of each share is this much okay but when you will sell it maybe after a couple of years now maybe the sh share prices have gone up okay so obviously when you sell share sh your shares they are sold at their market price whatever is prevailing in the market so you sell it at that price it is very simple to understand 
when you buy your car for example for 10 lakh in 10 lakh and then later on you decided to sell it but at that price because the prices of the cars let's say they go up so now when you sell your car even if it is old still you are able to get 1500 dollars or sorry 15 lakh in that case so same is the case with share certificates as well but shareholders can get their investment back in that way that is by selling shares but they can't say that uh, that they can straight away get into the company and say okay i want my money back now this is not possible okay all right so let's get okay now you can see, if you see the share certificate you will see that the name of the company will be there the if you see at the top right side it's written number of shares and number of shares basically tells that what percentage of ownership belongs to that person how big that shareholder is okay now so then certificate number is there total amount is also there has a total authorized amount you can see that uh, right there has a total authorized amount of so if number of shares are given the value is given so you can easily see how many shares are held by a person all right and then uh, this they, actually they cut it into two piece, pieces when they are sold okay if they are unsold this is the whole piece of paper which is there but as soon as they are sold what do they do you can see that the dotted line at the lower part of the certificate see uh, this one this dotted line so what do they do they just cut it okay and the lower part is uh, taken by the company okay as a proof and the upper part is given to the shareholders and it's a proof that now they are the owners of the company because without having a share certificate they have no evidence so if uh, the company say that you have not invested money in the business or in the company they have nothing to prove they cannot prove it prove it in the in the court right okay so and you know that signatures of the president the vice president secretary treasurer so all they sign it so that it will be a written proof as well and the the stamp of the company or the company official is also there all right so getting back to yeah uh, yes this one now so now you understand issue of shares so shares are issued means they are offered for sale so people who buy them you can see that people who buy them they become the shareholders now they are the owners i told you and why they are called shareholders i told you that as well then but you need to remember when shareholders are there you are the owners but shareholders do not manage the business so it's very surprising it's your money which is being used in the company and you are at a risk because your money can be used uh, in an ineffective way or uh, might not be used in the way you want it and eventually you suffer loss or you might not get the profit you want it is possible so it means you invest the money but somebody else uses your money okay to run the business so that is uh, quite strange but uh, it's the fact so shareholders do not manage the business okay now so then who manages the business in that case so now you can see that brown arrow moving upwards so now you can see who manages it ceo or board of directors and we discussed that earlier as well so who is a ceo uh, hiraj avet can you tell me sir can you repeat the question my question is who is ceo sir the person above the board of directors i guess the founder uh yeah why not yes quite possible that is possible that if i did talk about microsoft as well so obviously you can say that that the bill gates was the ceo because he was the co-founder along with mr tim okay all right and similarly i talked about jeff bezos as well so jeff bezos is right now the ceo of amazon so it means this is the highest rank of management one can achieve okay but remember 
the top most position as far as uh, management is concerned that is the board of directors and we call them bods okay so one of the person actually comes above uh, uh, goes above them that is ceo chief executive officer he is also or she is also a board of director but that person rests at the top okay and can control board of directors as well normally they are the founders sometimes they use a term chairperson as well uh, uh um, in place of ceo now so board of directors are responsible for management remember they are responsible for management so what do they do so do they really manage workers or what is their main job um Fazan, can you tell me what is the main job of uh, the board of directors? So they make decisions. They make decisions. They make policies. Absolutely right. And they actually then send it to all the branches of the business. So, uh, where do they operate from? Board of directors, Fazan. Fazan, where do they operate from? So from the head office. Very good, from the head office. So it means their main job is to stay there in the head office, and they make policies, they form strategies, and they devise ways how to make the business more successful. Okay, it means that they do all the paperwork. Okay, but they are not attached with the ground level. they do not meet the workers who actually meet customers on regular basis okay so what do they do uh, i will talk about it that who actually manages them at the ground level board of directors they make policies and they actually form the top level of management of any company now how board of directors become part of limited companies that is the question so for that you can see that annual general meeting or agm is called and obviously when it is called so all shareholders they are invited in that annual general meeting obviously that is done by the founder or more specifically the promoter or the promoters who actually started the company so they call it and then all shareholders they who actually bought the shares they become the part of that meeting and then what happens then election is conducted and what is that election for election of board of directors so you remember board of directors are not hired they are elected now what does it mean it means that you cannot fire board of directors it's not possible you can simply again call a meeting to vote them out or you can so a no confidence vote against those board of directors so once they are elected they cannot be thrown out of the system straight away there is a legal procedure a proper procedure so election of board of directors is done and then what happens uh, shareholders cast their vote and voting power do remember depends upon the amount of shares held by a shareholder i told you earlier now because in board of directors sorry in the election of board of directors shareholders cast their vote okay all shareholders they cast one vote but their voting power is different it varies depending on how many shares are held by one individual for example if one person is holding 40% shares of a company okay 40% shares of a company so if that person will cast one vote in the annual general meeting it will be considered that 40% shareholders have cast their vote so this is how uh, it is done like so voting power is very crucial especially in the case of voting process now then uh, i told you earlier when board of directors are elected 
so you know that they form policy they make strategies okay they do the all paperwork okay but who actually operate at the ground level who deals the stuff who attends the customers and those are we call them managers and managers are hired by board of directors remember they are not elected they are hired by board of directors so it means they can be asked to leave straight away if maybe they are negligible in in their duties or uh, they do not have the required skills or they do not perform their duties diligently now so managers branch managers area manager country manager so there are different forms of managers departmental manager right so they have their own jobs all managers they are specialized to perform their own functions like a finance manager obviously will be dealing with the finance um hr manager human resource manager will be dealing with the with the staff members hiring and firing of the staff marketing manager might be dealing with the customers as well and will be responsible for communication with the customers let's say advertisements uh, advertisement is one form of communication with the customers you know that so there are many managers and they perform their job because they are specialized in their own job and remember board of directors are also specialized they are highly expert in their own field so all board of directors have their own function as well board of director marketing board of director finance board of director human resource right board of director um accounting and finance so and then they have their own area to operate because all board of directors will not be dealing all managers there are specific board of directors like for example the board of director finance will be sending policies or news um rules of the company to the finance manager right so now you understand this now do remember we'll talk about it but you need to understand i told you shareholders do not manage the business despite the fact they own the business although in case of partnership business and sole trader business you know that they are the owners and they are the managers as well they control the business all partners and sole trader so we call this concept when shareholders are not able to own the business what do we call you can see the green circle that is divorce between ownership and control we call it and you know that what is divorce divorce means separation simple as that so when divorce happens it what does it mean okay let me uh, share you um yeah now you can see you can see the pictures to your right side board of directors are there sitting in the head office and they they are having a meeting and maybe they have a meeting on regular basis because they have to deal with different issues or the problems which are appearing in different branches of the company so board of directors they manage it and if down below there is shareholder power the shareholders own that is the difference see Bo board of directors manage whereas shareholders own they cannot interfere in the management of the business they cannot straight away uh, barge into the head office and say what the hell are you doing i am the owner and how dare you take that decision this is just not possible at all right so this is a limitation or maybe uh, a kind of a disappointment for shareholders as well okay but what do they have so what shareholders can do at the maximum for example if they are not happy so this concept is called divorce between ownership and control and that could be a disadvantage as well you know that because i told you that shareholders might not be happy with that and why they won't be happy for example if they are not getting the profit they want okay or the board of directors are not running their company in the manner they wanted like it's not progressing well the profit is not increasing the image is uh, spreading bad among the potential customers for example so what they can do because they cannot interfere in their matter what do they do they actually call either an extraordinary general meeting or an annual general meeting do you know what is the difference between 
an extraordinary general meeting and annual general meeting because I did discuss about it in the previous class. Faria Khan. The extraordinary general meeting takes place if new elections have to take place or the board of directors has to be re-elected. So in case the shareholders are unhappy or not getting the amount they want, so before uh, the annual general meeting, extraordinary general meeting takes place. Okay, However, right. on the other hand, annual general meeting takes place yearly. Okay, on the same right. time. Okay, very good, Faria. Okay, I'd like to add in it, um, annual general meeting, as the name suggests, that it is held every year. Okay? And there are there are two main purposes of holding, a, holding an annual general meeting. One, if sharehold, shareholders are not satisfied, as Faria said, so re-election can take place. But first of all, they will show, they will have a no-confidence vote. Okay? They will vote the current uh, board of directors out okay because they'll vote and they'll say no we are not happy if majority says we are not happy obviously the board of directors have to leave in that case then obviously there will be a re-election and then another panel of board of directors uh, be it three four five six or seven depending on the size of the company so they are elected again okay their second purpose of the annual general meeting as well and that is take the shareholders into confidence to inform them about the progress or about the strategies and the policies they are making to make the business even more successful. Because shareholders are completely blind, you know that. They stay in, at their home. They have no idea what's going on. They, they are not familiar with the operations of the company. So every year it is held, even if the company is going well, they have to answer the questions of the shareholders as well so that they can make them satisfied because obviously it is their money which is at stake. So two purposes are there uh, in case of an annual general meeting or the purpose of holding an annual general meeting. So they make them satisfied by telling them everything that how they will make their business even more successful and how they will be getting even a better return than that. Okay. But extraordinary general meeting, we call it EGM because annual general meeting is AGM. So EGM, the same purpose might be there, but because it's written extraordinary. So it is called in extraordinary circumstances. Now remember, meeting such, such general meetings can be called by board of directors as well and they can be called by shareholders as well. Generally, in an annual general meeting is normally called by board of directors. Reason is because they have to inform shareholders what is going on. Okay? And how the business is progressing. What are their strategies? So, it is called by board of directors, but it can be called by shareholders as well when they are not happy with the board of directors. So, similar, same is the case with extraordinary general meeting. Extraordinary general meeting may not be called by board of directors. Generally, it is called by shareholders. When they think that maybe now it's not possible for the current board of directors to continue. Otherwise, they have to suffer a huge loss. Okay? So they cannot wait for that whole year. Because obviously, at the end of the year, annual general meeting will be called. But they cannot wait so long. They think that it will be too risky. So what do they do? They call an annual general meeting. And there they actually vote the current board of directors out of the company. And then they elect other board of directors, the new ones. All right. Okay. So I hope you understand. Uh, any question from any student up till now? Uh, especially Usman and Rida Yazdani. No, sir. All right. So... No, sir. Is everything clear to you? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, good. Okay, let's move on. Um, just a minute. Okay, all right. So now one more term which is there, that is you can see that share capital. You can see that. Now, 
why do we call it sheer capital because capital you know capital is the money which is invested in the business and capital is all sorts of equipment machinery building which help in the um, operation of the company but in partnership and sole trader we call it capital but why in a limited company we call it a share capital can anybody tell me any volunteer no one is it that sir, different sir sir no. money raised by the sales of shares very good it means i told you that in limited companies to collect a certain amount of money you have a certain method to do it a procedure to do it and that is you sell shares like promoters they sell shares okay so when they sell shares they get the money from the people so those people become the shareholders and money becomes a part of the business and we call it share capital because by issuing shares business is able to generate a certain amount of capital that is why we always call it share capital okay there is another way to uh, uh, raise finance that is you can borrow money from the banks as well and do you know what do we call it we can call it loan capital here we can't call it share capital because now the source is different you are not actually issuing shares you are borrowing money from the bank so it's a it's a loan capital all right now i need to explain you one thing i told you now the concept of divorce between ownership and control right now the problem is that especially the promoters who actually started the company they have a major problem it might not be the problem for other shareholders but for the founder right and do you know why because obviously they started the company and they have a great interest in the operation of the business and how it is going on because now the company is known by the name of that individual or individuals that is why i told you that microsoft is known by bill gates although bill gates is not the only owner now right similarly facebook is known by mark zuckerberg but again mark zuckerberg is not the only owner facebook is a limited company so why because uh, the reputation of the promoter is at stake as well so they do not want to lose the control of the business but somehow when they lose it obviously uh, they get disappointed so promoters generally want that they must have a majority of the capital or the shares with them do you know why why they want to have majority shares with them anyone so they can have more power absolutely they can have more voting power because i told you voting power in an annual general meeting for the election of board of directors heavily depends on the number of shares held by a shareholder so if for example let me give you an example for example if there is a promoter okay a founder of the company okay now that person holds 51% shares of a company okay and 49% of the shares they are bought by some other people in fact various individuals so now in an annual general meeting if that person says i will actually uh, will be standing as a candidate uh for the board of directors post in that case other shareholders might not like that why because in that case the shareholder will be managing the business as well okay and then they won't be aware but that shareholder who is the promoter or the founder will be taking control of the operation as well and if that founder is dishonest so that founder might be getting more profit and the other shareholders might not have any idea what is happening in the company and okay so what do they do for example 51% shares uh, belong to the founder so now for example if other shareholders do not agree with that still that person cast a vote in favor of himself or herself now 
so what what would be assumed in that case that 51% shareholders have cast their vote so now can other shareholders vote that person out is it possible can they stop that founder to become the board of director as well is it possible anyone no sir obviously no because for example if all the rest of the shareholders they cast a vote against that founder so it will obviously make up 49% of the shares only still nobody can stop him or her becoming a board of director so once a founder becomes the board of director now i told you that the uh, the person or the founder holds two offices one as a board of director the second as a share of uh, shareholder so that person actually gets a salary as well because board of directors although they rest at the top level of management but they are the employees of the business remember so that is why they get salaries shareholders although they cannot take part in the management of the business but they are the owners of the business that is why they get profit so they get their share of profit even if they do not attend any meeting whenever a company earns profit profit is actually sent to their home addresses as far as shareholders are concerned okay so it's safe so now the founder will be controlling the operations as well and will be in, uh, and getting a salary and at the same time will be enjoying the profit at the same time so normally founders they want to have this sort of uh, structure there in the company uh, but uh, it is not possible every time we'll discuss that why why and when will it um, uh, difficult to uh, grab the position of the board of director okay so we are done with that and uh, i guess uh, that is it why because uh, in the next class we'll talk about let me show you this one we'll talk about the different types of limited companies which are there private limited companies and public limited companies we'll talk about them in the next class so if you have any question uh, i am there otherwise thank you very much that is all i'll see you in the next class